News at sunrise. It is now one minute before five o'clock and here's a few of our Wednesday headlines. The man who was charged with starting several fires, including that huge grass fire in Northeast Portland last summer, pleaded not guilty yesterday. That grass fire burned several homes and dozens of cars. Alan Singerhouse is also accused of starting other fires around the city and police think he could be connected to a few others as well. The school bus driver who crashed near Forest Grove last month will not be charged. The 20 year old driver was originally cited for DUII. The Washington County Sheriff's Office could still give that driver a citation though. There were 10 kids on the bus the day of that crash. None of them were hurt. And in Washington state, officials are proposing a new tax that would support the cost of fighting wildfires. Washington's Commissioner of Public Lands wants to raise $63 million to modernize firefighting efforts that would include helicopters, more full-time crews, that would also help maintain the land to reduce the risk of fire. It would cost the average household in Washington one extra dollar a month. Rod Hill gives it a thumbs up. <laughs> Those are a few of your Wednesday headlines. Brenda, what else do we have coming up on Sunrise? Oh, funny shoe you should ask, Mr. <laughs> Carney. Do you guys remember this man? He owns a world champion beard, or Beardly. at least he did. Cassidy Quinn was there when he shaved it off for a good cause. And this morning on KGW Carpool, KGON radio host Iris Harrison. She has been talking rock and roll in the Rose City for 42 years, and now she's retiring. I lucked into this amazing journey, and I, I'm glad to be part of it for you know, the city of Portland, and God, I love this city so much. Iris has interviewed the greats Zeppelin, Aerosmith, the Rolling Stones, and now she has big plans for a brand new chapter coming up what her fans can expect. That was a really fun carpool. Can't wait to show you. Now I'm thinking that Iris Harrison probably, I mean, if she's not at the top of the list, she is near the top of the list of Portland people who have rubbed elbows with lots of famous people. Absolutely. I mean, her list is long. Yeah. I know a semi-famous guy. <laughs> His name is Rod Hill. He joins us now to talk weather. <laughs> I petted my dog this morning. That's how that's how I rub shoulders with the famous. That's it. We have cloudy skies out there this morning and we do have dense fog again like yesterday on the west side. Hillsborough. Good morning down south Salem. Good morning. Portland's at 41 degrees. It is freezing in our capital city this morning, so potentially some icy spots. Our bus stop weather foggy spots around in Portland above freezing 38 degrees overcast at noon 44 away from the gorgeous light winds and then cloudy to mostly cloudy and really pretty pleasant when the kids get out of school back up to about 48 degrees. We'll tackle that seven day forecast coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Rod. Topping our news at five o'clock. Here's a live look at the Capitol in Washington, D.C., where in just a few hours, round two of impeachment hearings begin. Today, the Judiciary Committee takes over. Yeah, that committee will decide if President Trump should face articles of impeachment. We have Tracy Potts in D.C. this morning to bring us the details. Phase two of the impeachment inquiry begins this morning with a civics lesson, testimony from four constitutional scholars. We'll hear from a number of legal scholars about the meaning of the terms bribery, high crimes and misdemeanors. Liberal law professors predominantly and one Republican witness. President Trump and his attorneys chose not to participate, calling the process unfair. We want Biden, we want the son, Hunter, where's Hunter? We want the sun, we want Schiff, we want to interview these people. Today's hearing follows a 300 page report from the Intelligence Committee making the case for impeachment. It argues President Trump abused power and endangered national security by withholding aid from Ukraine to force an investigation of political rival Joe Biden. This report chronicles a scheme by the President of the United States to coerce an ally into doing the, ple the President's uh, political uh, dirty work. The President did it, and it's time to hold him accountable. The report includes new records of phone calls between Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani and Devin Nunes, a top Republican overseeing impeachment hearings. Maybe they have the recordings of my phone calls with Rudy Giuliani. Uh, they're welcome to play them because everything I spoke with Rudy Giuliani about is nothing that I wouldn't care if the American people found out. Today's hearing is expected to last five hours. And it won't be the last, but no word yet on who those other witnesses might be. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. 
That hearing starts at 7 a.m. and you can watch it right here on KGW or stream it on our news app and YouTube page. Or if the hearing isn't your thing, be sure to catch us for Sunrise Extra on our social media pages. We do have a local piece of impeachment related news this morning. Oregon Republican Newt Bueller, who ran for governor last year, he says he's getting rid of his campaign contributions from Gordon Sondland. Sondland is the ambassador to the European Union. He's been a key figure during these impeachment hearings. Three women have also accused Sondland of sexual misconduct, and Bueller says that's what made him rethink Sondland's support. Bueller says he'll now donate the $22,500 Sondland gave his campaign to charity. We're learning more about the disturbing chain of events leading up to a Vancouver woman being shot and killed in a school parking lot. Police say Tiffany Ojeda Hill's estranged husband murdered her, but there were lots of red flags before this. Tiffany had a restraining order against Keelan Hill for abuse, but court records show he violated that order several times. Just last month, police say they arrested Hill for putting a GPS tracker on Tiffany's car. Prosecutors ask a judge to raise his bail to $2 million because Tiffany's life was in danger, but the judge didn't, and Hill got out. Less than two weeks later, he shot and killed Tiffany and her mom in front of their children, then killed himself. I want to know why it is that the judges in Clark County are not taking the recommendations set forth by investigators witnesses, victims, and the prosecutors that are trying to protect the victims. That is a very good question. So she is the president of the National Women's Coalition Against Violence and Exploitation. She says the justice system failed Tiffany, and Tiffany's friends tell us they want to help change the system to save other victims of domestic violence. Let's get to an update now. We have an update on this morning on the death of Michael Veach at the hands of a St. El uh, St. Helens, that is, St. Helens police officer back in October. So police say Veach fired a gun inside a Chevron gas station, then led police on a chase, then walked along Highway 30 and shot at cars. A St. Helens police officer rammed Veach with his patrol car and that wound up killing him. But the Columbia County DA's, a DA's office says the officer's use of force was justified because innocent lives were at stake. Michael Veach is also the brother of Matthew Veach, so police say Matthew helped the man accused of killing Callas County Sheriff's Deputy Justin DeRosier. He helped him elude police earlier this year. Investigators say a two alarm fire that destroyed this Lake Oswego home started in the chimney chase. That's the wall space around the fireplace and the chimney. It flared up on Monday night after the owner built a fire and then put it out. I think what happened is the heat from the fireplace made the wood behind it brittle. It just has to have a little draft and then it just flares up. Zouten. No one was home when this started, but sadly the family's puppy died. All right, take a look at this next piece of video. This is the moment a man slashed the tires on two vehicles at a Clark County family's home. This is the second time this has happened now in just the past couple of weeks. Nancy Delgado says a few weeks ago, someone slashed all four tires on her husband's truck, so they got a security camera. And that security camera caught a man doing the very same thing Monday night. He ruined another four truck tires, and he also slashed one of the tires on the family's Honda. Nancy says the man was caught on camera looking around some neighbors' cars too, but he didn't touch their tires. Delgado says the damage has cost more than $4,000 for her family. So if you recognize the guy in this video, call the Clark County Sheriff's Office. A sheriff's deputy in Southern Oregon is being called a guardian angel after rescue. <laughs> <laughs> Can I Where are you can going, I, Can I tell friend? you what happened? I thought no, you were no, no, leaving me out of the shot, so I walked this. out of the shot. As I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> the sheriff's deputy <laughs> is being called a guardian angel after he rescued that family stuck in the snow. <laughs> This is a good story, but I like to tell the story about why we messed up the story. First, tell the story. All right, the Smith family became stranded last weekend when a wind gust pushed them off the road and into deep snow. So they were on a very deserted road. The dad, his name is Alex, says he couldn't get the car started again. He had no cell phone reception, so you can just imagine the situation if you were in it yourself. He started to worry, and just at that moment, Jackson County Sheriff's <laughs> Deputy Ian Lance came to the rescue. Deputy Lance drove them the rest of the way home. He came in and really saved the day for us. And you know, maybe for him, it's just another day at the office. 
But for us, I mean, it was, it was everything. I'll continue the story. Deputy Lance says he was patrolling areas where people tend to get lost or stuck when he came across the Smith family. So here's what happened there. I mean, honestly, <laughs> all these stories that we tell you, they're divided up between you, me, sometimes Nina yeah. when she's here. Yeah. That yeah. story said Nina. So you and I were wondering who's going to tell this one. Mm -hmm. And I thought you gave me the hand signal saying I got this. So I thought, OK, I'll let Brenda get this. Oh, we're both going to do it. I better come back. <laughs> So I did give you the high sign, yeah. it's true, because it was on a two shot. Sometimes and, we don't and, know all the hand because, signals, Brenda. I, I was just going to say, I'll start it, and yeah. then you go ahead and pick it up. Rod, when do you want to jump in? <laughs> now would be a great time. Can I just say I really enjoy working with you two? I don't think you oh do. <laughs> I get the sense lately that you don't. Well, but, but there are times where I question you? it. Here's